Hi, Martin here, the AKM Project Guy. Uh, welcome back for part eight of the King Tut build. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be working on the, um, the Vulture and the Cobra and also the, the beard uh, of the sculpture. And this will conclude all of the parts that I need to assemble the sculpture. So I'm gonna try and wrap things up by going ahead and uh, once we finish all this, I'll put it all together and see what we get. So this profile is the scale with the rest of the sculpture. I found an image from the front and I matched the two up and I've made this um, drawing here from that and what my plan is to do is to take this and project it onto this uh, these two panels that I glued together. Okay, so once I had my um, cut out, I had to whittle it down, obviously, to make it fit the shape of the uh, beard. And then also I had to make sure it matched up with the chin of the sculpture as well. And so that's what I'm doing here. I added me this little guide here. And so what this is going to do is keep my pattern centered. And this gave me the piece that I'm going to actually um, glue down. The uh, challenge of bringing this pattern down the piece was that I couldn't cut the back side of the pattern, uh, the piece, until after I put it in place because the other piece had to be able to come in and mesh with it properly. So as you see here, I had to glue it down, then I had to come back and trim the back end to make sure that the next piece fit in. And I had to do this and obviously look at the uh, pictures so that I can maintain the pattern all the way down. And so when it came to the bottom tip of the beard, uh, I used the, pretty much the same strategy. Uh, but I used strips instead and glued them down um, vertically and wrapped it around as, as you can see here. Um, the only time this got challenging is once the pattern was um, wrapping up on the sides, it made it a little harder for me to, um, to get the piece in there to um, finish it off. But uh, I was able to do it and I, and I thought it turned out pretty good. After that, the uh, only thing I had to do was sand it down to the uh, proper size. So as you can see here, I took the profile of the vulture and attached it to a piece of foam. Uh, basically, I'm going to cut this out and use my Dremel with various uh, grinding tips on it to see if we can't duplicate this. So the challenge with the vulture was that uh, obviously it had to be symmetrical. Uh, as I work my way down through the foam. And the way that I did that is I would put my markings on it to identify the outline and the boundaries, but then I go right back and remove it as I was removing the extra foam. So once I cut down so far, I would have to go back and redraw those um, the markings and the boundaries again. And so I had to kind of do that as I worked my way down. Um, but of course, the goal was to keep everything symmetrical so that um, you can, you know, when you look at the vulture, you can see both sides of it when it sits up there on the headdress. So I wanted to make sure that the eyes lined up with, you know, with the other side and also the nostrils and so forth and so on. So this was the uh, best way to do it. And once I had a, the material removed to where I was um, satisfied with the vulture, I used my hot needle gun uh, here, as you can see, to add the detail, um, much in the same way I did the hieroglyphs on the back side of the sculpture. Uh, obviously, I had to be very careful. Uh, I didn't want to make any mistakes. It would be very hard to correct those. Uh, but I used that to... Um, 
put the pattern also on the back side of the uh, vulture and here's how that turned out. As for the cobra, I broke it down into uh, two parts, the head and the body. So the body here, I mapped it out on top of the sculpture using uh, blue masking tape, as you can see here. Okay, so I took the blue tape um, and made this um, cutout pattern for the snake. And as you can see, I cut three more out, but all of them get a little smaller as we go along. And what the plan is, I'm going to actually put the scale lines in here using my hot wire cutter. And then we'll just uh, stack these up together to get the, um, the snake look, hopefully. Okay, as you see here, I'm putting the scales down. Now on average, the scales were about uh, three millimeters in length, except where the snake body curve and I had to bunch them together. Um, but when I put the second layer on, I didn't put the scales on first because I wanted to maintain that, um, that brick layer pattern. And in order to do that, I had to wait until it was glued in place. And of course I did the same for the third layer. And then I had to add a fourth, uh, which was the ridge of the snake that ran down the uh, ridge line of the snake. Uh, and um, once I had that all done, then it was uh, time to shape it more by removing the extra material. And once I removed that extra material, I did have to go back over it with my hot needle to um, redefine those scales and get the uh, proper spacing. But um, having it already done and having the natural lines from the different layers help to maintain the uh, illusion that the snake was um, getting smaller as it went further toward the tail. Okay, so when it comes to the head of the cobra, um, there's just not enough information for me to be definitive about it. So I will have to use a little bit of license as I um, figure out how to do it. And obviously, I just want to try and make it match the original sculpture as much as possible. So just like before, I'm going to make a wafer again and then glue it on to the cobra uh, body. And so I need to cut this out and then see if we can attach it. As for the column that runs down the center of the snake, uh, I decided to do that separately um, and then glue it on once uh, I had it completed. And of course the, air, the head of the snake had to be attached and so basically I just um, went back to my profile shot and made a copy of it and cut it out and then um, sculpted it down accordingly. And once that was completed, I went back and uh, finished up the back side of the cobra that's uh, it's going to attach to the headdress. So obviously this took a little bit of time to make sure that everything uh, matched up and also that the cobra head would fit on there properly. So here I am uh, adding that column that runs up the center of the cobra. Um, the next thing was to be able to get the head to fit on top of there and mesh properly. Um, so it took me quite a bit of time to draw that out and to make sure it fit. But once I had it, uh, I was able to go back and finish up the cobra head and to add the detail um, that I wanted. So obviously the next step was to attach the head as you see here. Um, so the interface where they come, came together had to be cleaned up a bit, but uh, once I got that done, uh, the next step, of course, was to attach it to the, um, the body of the snake that, it, that adorns the top of the sculpture. And here's how that turned out. So here I am uh, lightly tacking everything together. 
So this is not the final cementing. It's um, just so that I can get an idea of what it looks like. So as you can imagine, having worked on this for over a year, I was just very eager to see what it looks like with all the pieces put together. Um, so ultimately, I still don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this sculpture. Um, I'm, I'm leaning toward making a mold of it, we'll see. But um, overall, I think it turned out extremely well. Um, there are a lot of things that, you know, I would love to go back and redo, but, you know, at some point you just have to stop and say, you know, we got to keep going. And so uh, this has helped me to learn a lot about um, doing a channel and, and the videos and, and all that. So it's been a learning experience. It's great. Uh, I enjoy doing it. I'm kind of eager to move on and do a do the next project. But uh, before we do that, I want to thank you for watching. And if you have any comments, um, please leave them for me. I would love to hear what you think and um, what you think about the sculpture.